Welcome, this is lesson number 12, and today we're gonna to be going over Adobe Camera Roll, also known as ACR. So if you've used Adobe Lightroom, it actually, Adobe Camera Roll, as far as editing, is exactly the same program. Um, I personally do not use Lightroom, but I do use ACR, and um, it's wonderful. So hold on, I'm gonna show you how I use Adobe Camera Raw. I'll go over uh, a majority of the features and I'll tell you which ones I use and which ones I don't. The fact is it has lots of stuff, but some of it I actually prefer to use in um, to make adjustments in Photoshop rather than Adobe Camera Raw. So hold on and I'll show you how it's done. All right, so we're here in Photo Mechanic. Um, this is just the browser that I use. You could use whatever you want. That's fine, doesn't make a difference. So we just have this. This is a picture actually of a new clownfish I got. So it was just something simple and easy and kind of shot at the manner that um, it's going to show some benefits here of Adobe Camera Raw. So today I'm going to do a more in-depth, but I'm not going to show you every single function in Adobe Camera Raw. Truthfully, I don't use a lot, but I'm going to show you the main functions that are available um, in it that a photographer might use. Now there might be some others that one photographer uses and another doesn't. But it's going to be close. It's going to give you a nice general basis of how to use it. So we're going to just select this. I'm going to hit Command D. And that will launch us into Adobe Camera Raw. So what are we at? 9.8 is the latest version. So we have this image here. And so this is the side of the tank and stuff. So I'm not really worried about that. But so the first thing we need to do here in Adobe Camera Raw is make sure it's actually set up right or set up how you want it to be. So down here, we can see I have already set mine, but the default would probably be sRGB. So I'm using the color, my color working space is Adobe RGB, so I'm setting it to Adobe RGB. And I am going to be working in the bit depth of 16 bits per channel. All right, so it's showing my size and uh, right here, the resolution that I'm gonna output since is a uh, pretty typical resolution to print at I set it at 300 so that's good I'm gonna hit OK and you will see down there that that's what we're gonna be getting 16 bits 300 pixels per inch and that is our pixel dimension so um, I have a cough drop in my mouth hopefully it won't cough too much so if you hear a little clicking that's what that is so our first thing here in this magnifier is just our general basic just like in Lightroom this allows us to uh, adjust color balance as long as long as you shot in raw so for this one I'm just gonna leave it as shot because that's pretty close I can easily dial the temperature sliders or the tint sliders back all right so we do have an auto function and just like just about everything in in Photoshop I never use it I will hit auto and we will see what it did yeah, it's blowing the background out way too much and blowing this out too much. So I'm just going to hit default and we're going to go back. I'm going to adjust that and then slide this this way. And that is our exposure. Okay. So this will allow us to adjust anything as far as exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, blacks, clarity, vibrance, and saturation. And so anything we want to adjust that is a global adjustment, we will be sliding these sliders. For right now, I'm not going to really do that. The next and most important function that you're going to end up running into is the adjustment brush. And this is K on your keyboard. And so you can see here we have the inner circle, which is a solid line, and the outer circle, which is a dotted line. And so the inner circle is a hunt and is a hundred percent of the effect and then it's feathering it out so if you want to change the size of your th your um cursor or your feather you can simply adjust it there so if i want a smaller feather now i have a smaller feather so you can use the color slider you can also use your bracket keys to go back and forth to change the size of the brush all right and so the idea of the brush is you're going to now paint um, an effect into the image. And so we're just, this will allow us to do specific adjustments to an image. 
So let's say in this image, I want to add a little bit more magenta and a little cyan. And I want my highlights to be a little darker. You can see what that looks like. I can come in here and paint that in. What is cool, because this is non-destructive, if I want to add more, I can add more. If I want to change my contrast, I can change my contrast. So it's infinitely adjustable. So this little red with the black dot means that that point is selected, all right? So let's say I wanted to do something different over here in these polyps. So I would come up here and hit new. And what what's weird about Photoshop is that there's no way to really reset this that well. So what I normally do is if you, you'll see, see how I've adjusted all these? I'm gonna just move my shadows up and I'm gonna, but I'm gonna click on the plus. Notice it automatically will default everything back to the beginning and just adjust that one. So now I can come in here and adjust that and now I can paint this into this area. And so now you can see this area is selected, but this is not. If I wanted to go over and select this area, all I have to do is click it, and now I'm back over here with this adjustment. If I want to go back to this adjustment and add to it, I just need to go over there and hit that adjustment. And so you would do that for all those. If there was a section that you wanted to erase, like down here, like let's say I, I like that here but not on the bottom, I can simply hit erase, make my brush a little bit bigger, and then erase that effect from that area. Okay, so that's basically the adjustment brush. So I'm gonna click back over here on this magnifier and now we're gonna skip most of this stuff for right now. We're gonna go into this next box. It's, it's uh, sort of like a little curve here. We're not gonna use it, it's not very effective. But what I do wanna go into is this detail. Now sharpening, I don't rarely ever use. But if you are shooting and have an older camera or shoot at high ISO and you do need to use noise reduction, here is your noise reduction. Easiest thing I can tell you is basically you just want to adjust your luminance value um, for right now. Usually I work between 5 and 20. I've rarely gone past 20 for noise reduction. So I'll just leave it on 2 even though I don't really need it on this image at all. The next thing we're going to do is go into the HSL or grayscale so we could convert to grayscale here just like you would in Photoshop. Truthfully, I would most likely do this in Photoshop because that way I would have a color and a black and white version instead of just going straight into a gray version. So we're not going to click that. We have hue. Now hue is going to let us do, and these are global adjustments, it's going to let us uh, change the color of anything that's red. So anything that's red, I notice I'm changing that color. Uh, so here orange, we're changing anything that's orange. So this is allowing us to change the color. And this is actually really good for color casts. So here um, we have yellow. So if I want to make my yellows a little bit more red, which I do, we're good. And so on. The next we have is saturation. And so just like before, if I desaturate orange, we will make it black and white. Now notice though it looked orange, a lot of times there's orange, there's red, there's yellow, all the same color in one specific area. So if you do deselect it, you still might, it might not be totally gray. But um, it does let you um, adjust the saturation. So if I wanted the saturation to be higher, I would just go to the right. And so that works for all the images. Then luminance of the color, so in this case, we'll do orange again. I will make my orange brighter or I will make my orange darker. And that works the same for the rest of the images. And be, believe it or not, I actually use luminance quite often. So we'll come down here to the next. This is for split toning. Truthfully, I never split tone in Adobe Camera Raw. I do that in Photoshop. So um, I won't go over that too much. As far as lens correction, you do have lens correction in Photoshop. Um, this is not an image where I will be using lens correction. So this, uh, let's say we wanna enable 
are pro notice it's reading my Canon, my 100, and it's automatically going to convert uh, and fix any lens issues, especially when dealing with architecture and stuff like that to help straighten out lines. You can also manually go in and adjust that as well. We have effects. So this newer dehaze feature, you can add grain and down here, um, I'll just do it a lot so you can see we're going to do a, a post crop vignette. Usually I, if I do the post crop vignetting, I actually am in Photoshop and then go back into raw because a, a vignette is something that it's usually like the last thing that I do to an image if I do add it. So um, that's not something I do in the beginning of raw. Now we're kind of getting into stuff that I really do not use in RAW. So, but we have the availability um, to once again adjust some colors and stuff. So here we have some presets and snapshots. So um, nothing much that we're gonna use. But that's gonna give you a lot of adjustment to your initial image. So up here we have a white balance tool, which I don't use, a color sample tool, targeted adjustment tool, which I don't use, never crop an image. Um, I always work off my full image, so if I, I need extra space, there's it's no real reason to be cropping an image before you even work on it. It doesn't make any sense. So we have the ability to straighten. If you wanted to straighten, like I wanted to make, click on this and then come in here and make this level out that's something that I could do I'm just gonna hit escape because I'm not gonna do it so here we're getting into the transform tool it's just nothing spot removal obviously spot removal is something you could do um, truthfully I don't like the way the spot removal tool um, works in Adobe Camera Raw because it's the same as um, the Lightroom one which I absolutely can't stand so um, that's something I would definitely do in uh, Photoshop. R red eye, I've never actually had red eye. So we have a, a, a gra graduated filter. We have a radial filter and so on, All right? So I'm gonna hit cancel actually. I'm gonna show you one more thing. So I'm gonna go back in here to photo mechanic and we're gonna assume Give me a second here. We're timing out for some reason. All right, so we're gonna take these three images here, all three of them. Assuming they are all shot perfectly alike and needed to be toned exactly the same, notice that when you launch multiple items within Photoshop, they all appear. You can come up here and either just hit Command A or select all. And now when I make an adjustment, notice it's applying to each individual adjustment. Now this only works with these global adjustments, okay, in the basic panel here. If you go into the adjustment brush, you need to click on a specific image to do that to it, okay? It won't make the same adjustment to all of them. And then let's say you are done, you could hit select all, and then when you hit open images, it's act, as long as they're all three selected, it's gonna launch, notice one, two, and then three images into um, Photoshop from there. And it's a huge time saver. So we're gonna go back to Photo Mechanic. I'm gonna click on this one image that I did not click on. And we're gonna do something one more. So let's say I wanna tone this image and I wanna do basically the same adjustments as what I did to the previous. You can come over here and hit Previous Conversion. And so it will apply what I did on the previous conversion. So when you're shooting in lighting circumstances where everything is the same and you need to do basically almost the same adjustments to every image, this is a great benefit. So then I would hit open image and that would have basic first, the same first basic um, adjustments that was applied to the previous images. So that's a little on Adobe Camera Raw. So hopefully that is helpful and get you um, into using it. Um, don't don't skip the step. Don't just say, oh, I'm going to do it in Photoshop. Adobe Camera Raw can really make your images much better. It's a great program. Um, I don't do like tons of very specific toning in it, but just general overall adjustments to get my image in a better spot, it is wonderful for. 
So thanks for watching and hope you learned something. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, follow me on social media, and watch a suggested video.